What does an action potential look like if we measure it with electrodes outside an axon and at two locations? Here's an axon. If we stimulate here, we make the outside more negative. We change the minus 70 to, say, minus 40. That starts an action potential. That charge we've stimulated will move along as the stimulus artifact. That's fast because all we have to do is have charges repel nearby charges. That's a fast process. The action potential requires opening and closing gates and ions moving across the membrane. So the action potential is always slower. If we measure inside and outside, then an action potential looks like the trace we keep talking about in class, like this, with time minus 70 and about plus 30. But if instead our electrodes at, are at two locations, a ground, a minus, and a positive, these are recording electrodes, then we're comparing what's happening at those two different locations. As the action potential goes by, first what happens is voltage-gated sodium channels come in, and we get an influx of sodium. Positive coming in to a negative, electrode, a negative electrode, that is making the outside more negative, and so we should see in our trace, at that moment, an upward deflection. The outside has become more negative as the sodium goes in. Then the next step is voltage-gated potassium channels open, and potassium leaves this electrode. That makes the outside more positive, and so we see a downward deflection. Then the action potential passes, so now these gates are all reset, and the action potential is here. And if these two electrodes are far enough across, apart, we go back to zero. Now, we're just measuring the outside of an axon, and we're not measuring the full charge, so this, wouldn't, uh, this may be only a few millivolts. We don't see the full amount as when we compare across the membrane. That's not so critical to remember. So it takes a while for the action potential to get to the next electrode. If there's enough time, the action potential gets here. Now we have sodium coming in. That's making the outside here less positive. We're moving a positive ion in, so we get a, um, a downward deflection, an upward deflection, and back. Now, when we actually measure, often the electrodes are close enough. Okay. There isn't a situation in which we're going to be doing exactly this. Instead, what we're going to be doing is measuring what happens in an entire sciatic nerve from the outside, which has many axons that differ in diameter and differ in speed. So there are very thin ones and thicker ones. We're going to have a stimulating electrode that induces AP here, a ground, that's our comparison, negative and positive recording electrodes. So the action potential in this one might be here, in this one might be here, in another one might be here. They're coming at different speeds and they stack up on each other. So when we're measuring a compound action potential, we're not measuring a single action potential. We're measuring the sum of what's going on at this location at a moment in time compared to this location. Because we're away, we're a distance away from most of these, we don't see large changes. And of course, a lot of them are canceling each, other's, each other out. The sodium moving into one is being canceled by the potassium moving out in the other. So what you'll see is you give the stimulus, you'll see a stimulus artifact that's happening just after the stimulus. It's pretty fast because that's passive. And then there'll be delay as the action potentials make it to the first recording electrode. Depending on the condition of your neuron and also whether you've inverted the trace on the screen, you'll, you could see an initial upward or downward deflection. Not uncommonly, it looks like this. And it's spread out over time. Not infrequently, we get a trace that looks rather superficially like an action potential in which it goes up and down and we only are we're recording mostly uh, one speed worth of electrons but you can tell it's not an actual action potential because the maximum might be three four five millivolts and the low might be minus two the shapes can differ the point is you're always measuring from the outside and you're always comparing one to the other so if this happens to be more negative outside than this one 
you'll see an upward deflection, that's negative near a negative. If it's more positive compared to this one, you'll see a downward deflection, and you can get large downward and upward deflections.